Look at this <laughs> little chubster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is, in this video, guys, I'm going to actually be talking about how I prepared for a German Shepherd and actually what I did for the first two weeks of getting a German Shepherd. Because um, a lot of people have asked me about that and a lot of people are getting German Shepherd puppies soon and said, well, how did I prepare and what, what sort of things did I do for the first two, two weeks. So I thought I'd just do this informational video and throw in a little few videos of him as a puppy um, so that, you know, it's not just me sitting here boring and talking with him. But it is cute in the background. There you go, look. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not comfortable, surely. It's, it's, it's nice that you want to give me the toy, so, right? But it's very near my private parts, and I'm not sure that's going to be safe. Also, it's very gross, that thing. It's <laughs> slobbery. I know. Do you want me to have I it? I don't want it. But, uh, <laughs> right, so yeah, the first thing I did, I knew that I wanted a German Shepherd, obviously, from, and I'm, I'm guessing if you're watching this, you know what you want a German Shepherd. The first thing I did was obviously look up breeders. Look up. Um, I looked up even things like you know how much a German Shepherd could cost, you know should cost and stuff. Because if you, if you sometimes if you if you find if you, if you think you find a really good deal on a German Shepherd puppy, um, and you say like three hundred pounds, or I don't know how many dollars that'd be, about four hundred fifty dollars. I don't know. Um, and you think, oh, what a deal, what a deal, go for it and just get and just go for it. It <laughs> it could sometimes be. Um, <laughs> You know, you gotta be skeptical. Basically, when you're going to a breeder, the things to look out for with breeders is you want to see their parents. Basically, at least the mother. Sometimes the dad won't be there, as as, as some breeders get the dad in from other people um, and don't actually have the dads themselves. Um, luckily, with him, I actually had the dad and the mum, and I could see them both. But that's another thing you want to look out for, and you don't want to obviously pay up front. Um, you want to, you know, you don't want to pay before you see the puppy. Um, you don't want to meet halfway somewhere between your house and their house and some, you know, ha mm -hmm. being handed over the puppy and stuff like that. This is what, you know, I was looking at puppy farms and all this kind of stuff before I got him just to be on the safe side and know that it's secure. Um, so that's why I was looking around for a very long time to find the right one. And it didn't matter to me price because, you know, it's about... Also, another thing to look for is, is the parents' hip scores because with German Shepherds, obviously, as a large breed, one of the you know, problems with them is that they can have hip dysplasia. Um, and that's the thing of breeding, unfortunately, uh, through the generations and stuff. Working line German Shepherds don't get it as much. Um, the difference between working line and show line, show line German Shepherds are a little bit calmer. Doesn't look it, or doesn't, in some of the videos, it doesn't seem like a very calm dog. Um, he isn't at the moment, but, it, but basically that's the difference. A working line German Shepherd, they, they have a lot less health issues um, because they're used more in, in police services and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're a lot more athletic, athletically built, so they're, they're, they're skeletal structure is actually, is actually um, a little bit better than, than the show lines. But most people obviously go for the show lines. Not many people would. I couldn't find anyone that was um, selling working breeds when I was looking. But I mean, I couldn't have made a better choice than, than mm -hmm. Sober. Could I? Right, so I made sure that I would uh, research the breeders as well that I was looking up. Um, just to be on the safe side, looking at you know their face. Most breeders have Facebook pages with clients that they've um, they've sold to their dogs and stuff like that. So I wanted to just check through that and make that sure that's safe. The thing with the parents' hip hip scores, it doesn't um, eliminate the chances of hip dysplasia completely. Even though they both his parents had great hips, um, it just sort of diminishes the chances basically of him having hip dysplasia. Um, so I wanted to do everything I could. And also, 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 I did research on the breed, obviously, as much detail as I possibly could. Things like when they're a puppy, before they're about a year and a half, you don't want to over exercise a German Shepherd because of their hips, basically. Um, too much exercise can be a very bad thing for their, for their hips. You don't, as long as you can, because obviously they get big very fast, pick them up, up the stairs, pick them down the stairs, pick them into a car, out the car. Like that, just to, to stop them jumping onto the hips and stuff like that. Obviously, he got so big I could barely pick him up anymore, and that's when he obviously had to go upstairs on his own. Um, 
don't let him run up hills too much because that's really there's quite a lot of pressure on on the and down hills when they're jarring on the thing. You just got to be careful basically one, one, while they're growing. Um, I would say it's best to have him on the sort of sort of skinnier side or the perfectly lean side um, as they're growing, obviously because they're getting more weight on their hips. It's it's, it's not a good thing. So the most preparation that you have to do is knowing that it is going to be hard work. Um, <laughs> I actually went into this a little bit blinder than I, than I should have. Um, I just wanted a big, smart, what? What do you want? A big, smart breed, basically. And I thought, Jeremy Shepherd. And I didn't realise how much energy he does have. Um, and how, obviously, well, he's massive. So that's another thing that, it, you know, he can take up a lot of room. Um, and he's headstrong. He's very headstrong. Mm -hmm. And most German Shepherd males ask quite head songs, so you have to know what you're doing and you have to be firm. Um, and yeah, it, it's stressful. And uh, obviously if you've had a large dog before, if you had it, it should be it should be quite fine. But yeah, I just didn't know. I just went into the it. hair. The hair is pretty bad. <laughs> Your um, hair. That's is probably bad. one of the worst parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably one Talk of the worst you. parts of having um, a German Shepherd is the hair and the mess. The mum does not like the mess no. of having a German Shepherd, the mud everywhere. And the hair, yeah, the hair is pretty bad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's as much as I can think about preparation. In the rest of the video, I'm going to be talking about uh, what I did for the first two weeks of having a German Shepherd, just in case you wanted to know that as well. Um, and I'll throw in a couple of videos, like I said, of him playing and training and all this kind of stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in the rest of the video. <laughs> he dropped it. Right. Um, Someone wanted me to do a video on what I did for the first two weeks of getting a saber. First thing I did was, obviously I crate trained and put him in the crate because I didn't want him peeing and pooing everywhere. Um, so I actually slept on the settee downstairs for the first week. And every two hours, because that's as long as they can hold their bladder, um, when they're about eight weeks, two hours is sort of the length they can go unless they're obviously sleeping for a very long time. Um, but he would wake up about every two hours. So I would straight away take him out into the garden and as soon as he peed, straight back in the crate, back to sleep. And if it had, if it happened three or four times a night, I would just do that, just to, to make sure that he would, he would know that's where he was meant to pee. He actually um, was house trained in about five days <laughs> because of this, I think. I don't know if it's because of this, but I feel like it could be. And he's really smart, obviously, so he picked it up. Did you pick it up fast? <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Right, so yeah, that's the, one of the first things I did. Um, yeah, and actually he was potty trained very quickly. Right there. Right, so before I got him, actually I got a few toys, um, I got essential things, like I said, the crate, the bowls, um, and all the kind of, mainly toys, because I wanted him to have something from day one in the car that he can sort of gnaw on the way home. Um, you probably saw it in there, his little leopard, that's gone, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> it lasted quite a while, actually, I was yeah. surprised. Um, he, he really loved that toy, but that, he, he ripped it up in the end and we couldn't really repair it. Um, but he loved that, and I'll show you how much he loved it in one of these clips in a minute. <laughs> he loved it a bit too much. Even from a very, very young age, he seemed to, uh, he seemed to love it a bit much. He ought to be near you. What are you saves. So I thought, yeah, like I said, I thought through this video, I would do clips of him as a puppy that I've got that I've, you may, may not have seen before on the channel. Um, of him, like I said, around nine weeks, ten weeks. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be of him playing with a few various toys. So he'll be chasing balls, playing with his leopard toy. Um, and I can't remember, there's other things, maybe chasing a hoover, stuff like this, buying a hoover, stuff like that. So I'll little mess that up together and then we'll come back to, to what we're going to talk about next and what I did. <laughs> He <laughs> <laughs> got a bit dizzy, did you? <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 
You mental case. You blew it. What? Are you? Wow, okay. Take it for a ride. Flipping heck. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it again. Get it! Get it! <laughs> good boy! He's a good boy! Get Good boy! Right, so the next thing uh, I want to talk about is training. Now training, I was lucky, well I say lucky, I, I wasn't working and I'm, I'm at college at the moment, but um, yeah, I had loads of time on my hands. <laughs> I had a lot of time on my hands basically and that was great when you get a puppy because I, I would just non-stop train him. Um, there'd be like 10 minute sessions, about five or six throughout the day. But luckily with him, I'm not. I, he learned tricks like, so fast that it, it blew my mind to the point I was just like to do all dogs learn this fast or you know um, so you'll see as well in these clips I've got coming up he learned to sit down in actually a few days um, after I got him so that was pretty incredible and then uh, I'll have another clip of him at like 10 weeks um, a little bit older he actually learned to stay as well which is quite impressive for <laughs> For like a 10 week old puppy to actually stay where I sent him to stay. I think at that point he actually learned spin as well and paw. So I think he's learned sit down, stay, paw and spin in a very, very short time. So, I, you know, amazing. He's just incredible. Right, so we'll cut to me training him and showing you all the tricks he did at a very young age. Like I said, I was just doing this pretty much all day. Um, five minute sessions with little treats. Um, little meaty treats and stuff like that. And he was responding very well. So I'll uh, see you in the next bit. Come. Now what we got here, the rice. Sit. Oh. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Is to put a bit more stock, Sit. Okay, just to make it Down. Good boy. Oh my gosh, he's so clever. Sit. Oh. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> Sit. Stay. Come then. Come, spin, good boy. Sit, down, good boy. Come, spin, good boy. Down, stay. Come then, good boy, good boy. Right, so the next video is gonna be showing, <laughs> what do you want? Showing how I socialized him at a very young age. Um, I obviously waited till he got his, I think it's first or second uh, injections from the vets um, and they told me that I could go on pavement and just not near a flowing wall or anything so I thought the best thing to do, we've got a school just, just over there and we thought the best time to take him would be as soon as the kids come out of school um, and we, there's a little um, shop just down the road and that's where all the kids go when, when they finish school. So we wanted to take him when he was tiny um, and uh, what kid could resist? A little German Shepherd fluffy puppy um, and stroking them. I wouldn't be able to. So we thought that's the best way. Get loads of kids to all fuss all over him, you know, and so that he's fine with kids and stuff. And he was loving it. He was loving all the attention. Um, so I've got, I've actually got a video of that. Haven't I? <laughs> so yeah. So I'll uh, cut to this video um, of me socialising Saber. I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> You're <laughs> 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 
Saber. 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 Right, so I'm just doing this quick little video just to say thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm hoping that this video was actually helpful to anyone that was looking to buy one of these beasts. Huh? So yeah, <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. I'm buying some uh, new toys for him tomorrow. Um, so I'll be doing reviews of them very soon. And I hope he enjoys them. And thank you so much again guys for everything and the support. And I'll see you in the next one.